All right, what's up, y'all? Take a fan here. As I about to today's video, we're here to talk about the five badges that need to be patched or nerfed in NBA 2K23. So I hope y'all enjoy. If you do, for to drop a like, sub if you're new to our noties, all that good stuff. And like always, try to find 2,000 likes. Now, to start us off, I have our honorable mentions. There are going to be three that I have to talk about, and they're all finishing. So first and foremost, it's going to be Slithery. I think this one is going to be allowing people to slide into just dunks and stuff like that with their X button way more often than it should be. And if we're being completely honest, this is way better than Posterizer. It's actually probably the best finishing badge in the game. I personally benefiting off it quite a bit as well, being put into contact dunks way more often off trying to go for that dunk meter. And as you can see, there's literally three different things on the description of it. Increase the player's ability to slide through traffic, so we not only are allowed to get into layups and dunks more often off it. Protect the ball from being stolen, that's another perk to Slithery that I actually I learned about recently for that matter. And then avoid contact during gathers and finishes at the rim. So, this right here is loaded with all types of descriptions on it. And in my personal opinion, even if it's a biased personal opinion of being someone that does dunk the ball quite a bit, I still think this could use a little bit of a nerf. But again, that's only my honorable mentions. I don't think this is something that truly needs to be patched 100%. It's just something that I'm offering a couple ideas out there. Another one being Fearless Finisher. This is crazy at letting you hit contested layups. I really do think this is the badge that carries super hard for me in some situations because when I go for those contact dunk meters and get kicked out of it, I still make 20% contested layups that I didn't have any timing or anything like that on because of this badge. It lights up every single time I get kicked out of a dunk meter and it's the only badge that does light up for that and again reduces the amount of energy loss from contact layups allows you to finish through contact as you can see at the top part of the description and like i said this could definitely use some modification as far as its power so to say but again these are only in the honorable mentions for a reason i do think that if you take kind of the brain dead finishing out of the game so to say the non-dunk meter stuff and just are really penalizing the people who use their x button while at the same time it will promote people to actually use the dunk meter and do some skilled things with slashing I don't think you can completely take this this style out of the game. Now, like I said, I think it will be good for the game if you were to do something like that, but at the same time, it's hard to really like picture a world where they just make it impossible to finish with your X button. Meanwhile, you can shoot the ball contested or wide open or anything like that, but you can't even really make more than a 10% on a finish when you have 99 driving layup or 99 driving dunk. At the end of the day, they have high ratings for a reason, and it's to get bailed out on some of those types of things. So. Just keep that in mind. The last one I want to talk about is definitely Acrobat. Now, this is my last honorable mention, and the only reason it's in honorable mentions is because it's not used very often. But my god, is this overpowered like crazy. So, not only do you receive the boost on stuff like that, as far as the crazy acrobatic layups. Now, as far as hitting hop lays, Euro lays, stuff like that, I don't think it's too crazy. But yo, <laughs> these acrobatic layups where you just spam your X button and like once you go in for a regular layup and then spam your X button, it's unbelievably brain dead. There's no skill to it involved. I know a lot of people might think that there is. And again, I'm not dissing the Euros and the hop lay type, type dudes. I'm dissing the acrobat spammers that literally will just spam their X button 15 different times while they're in a layup animation. And it gives you the most unblockable, uncontestable, ridiculous animations ever. Now, again, the reason this is in the honorable mentions and not actually on the list because not many people do it. I've only ran into maybe like two people all year that do it, but holy crap, is it insane when people actually do this stuff again. And not to mention, I am of the believer that it does help you beat defenders with gathers as far as if you do hop lays, spin lays, euros, stuff like that. As you can see, the cradles and reverses. I don't, I don't think that really is much gather involved though, as far as those, but Again, it is still a multifaceted badge, and it really goes hard, and the fact that it's tier 1 is pretty crazy. But again, not many people use it, not many people do it, not many people exploit it, but just stay on the lookout for stuff like that. When you complain about the interior defense on this game, definitely be mindful of whether it was an acrobatic layup that you're seeing, because that's what really is broken, if you ask me. But anyway, into the actual list of our top five, we're starting here at number five and we'll work our way up to number one. Now, it's so funny because I've started with three honorable mentions being finishing. Mind you, those aren't even the ones that I think truly need to be patched yet. Again, Acrobat being the only one that truly probably does, but not many people do it, so it's not even a huge deal. But to start us off with the actual first badge that we have on the list at number five, I have Limitless Takeoff. Now, not only is this really, really crazy for the people who do hold their X button for dunks and stuff like that, and you just get put into really crazy animations that aren't very blockable. I even do it myself sometimes because obviously I'm not trying to use the dunk meter every single time that I go for the takes, especially if they're not like super contested or anything like that. If it's semi open, I'm going to be trying to hold my X or up on the stick or for that matter, I flick up then hold up for a flashy dunk and it gives you more takeover. Regardless though, 
of any of that stuff being talked about. That's where Limitless Takeoff is activating for the most part. Now, Limitless Takeoff doesn't activate for quick drops, but the consensus around it is that you need it on Silver to be able to get the best animations for the quick drops. And personally, I think that's something that could use a little bit of a nerf as well, or a patch, so to say, where we just make it not great animations all so often when it comes to the people that have 80 dunk and quick drops that's a way that you could probably nerf it a little bit maybe if they got the not amazing animations out of quick drops for only having silver like what's the benefit to having hall of fame when it comes to just quick drop conversation again i understand the benefit to having hall of fame is to be able to get dunks from further away on different animations but Again, we're talking about the best dunk in the game, that being front clutches and quick drops. Those two animations, you only need silver to pretty much unlock the best animations. And to be fair, maybe I'm a little bit misinformed when it comes to this badge, but I have watched the 2K Labs video when it comes to this, and they say that the higher the level of the badge, the more likely you are to get the best animation out of that dunk. But my opinion is that quick drops have like kind of a capped like best animation because you don't just unlock the best animation more likely at hall of fame in my opinion if, if people have silver they get the best one nearly every single time so i don't know what the deal is with that personally like i said i just think this could use a little bit of a nerf when it comes to the x button dunking from slashers as well as obviously if you could find a way to target that quick dropping aspect it'd be really really great now <laughs> We're finally into the part of the video where I'm not talking about finishing badges. It just happened to be that, like I said, the honorable mentions were all finishing, and then my number five was going to be Limitless Takeoff. <laughs> Ironically, though, the next one being Playmaking also deals with slashing, where we have Clamp Breaker. I promise you guys, though, the top badges in this do not have anything to do with slashing. It's going to be things that are completely unrelated. But for next one, Clamp Breaker being my number four, I think this could really use some work. I think, honestly, there are some times that I can just literally run right into people if I want to go brain dead mode with it, and really just kind of graze right by them. It's it's pretty brain dead, not to mention, again, to combat the quick dropping and stuff like that. When you can stop people from the drives and the blow buys and stuff like that, it becomes that much better. Now, in my opinion, I think they could really just use a buff to clamps as we mentioned in the other video, but then you get into this whole trifecta of if clamps gets buffed and then unpluckable doesn't get buffed, then you just have a situation where now defense is way too OP and you're just going to be relying on clamp breaker all day as well. And it's just a bad, it's a bad trifecta. So I think if clamps gets buffed, you need unpluckable to get buffed too. And then if clamps gets buffed, then clamp breaker doesn't even need to be nerfed because then at that point you just buff the clamps, which clamp breaker counters. So overall, I'll just put it like this. It's pretty easy to understand if you just make it this simple. If clamps doesn't get buffed, Clamp Breaker needs to be nerfed. If Clamps does get buffed, then Unpluckable probably needs to be buffed as well because then defense is way too OD. And if Clamps gets buffed as well, then Clamp Breaker does not need to be nerfed. Simple as that. <laughs> so apologize if that's really complicated, but just to explain what this badge is doing one last time, again, as you can see, improves a player's ability to fight off contact, protect the ball, and drive by opponents as the ball handler. All of this included is pretty much just something where even outside guards benefit off it because they're less bumpable, so to say. And then for the inside people that are kind of just more of the rim runner style, you obviously can just drive right by your defender and you get blow bys way more often. Or kind of just the shrugs where you just kind of kick, kick someone off you as you drive by them. It's kind of stupid. I don't know if this badge should really even be in the game, if we're being completely honest. I think strength, just in general, should determine when you get those blow buys and stuff like that if people can't really hold you because to make this a sort of ball handling sort of thing is kind of crazy if you ask me but either way like i said clamp breaker coming at number four on our list all right so next up on the list we have agent three coming in at number three this badge particularly being on this list for the reason that it's so multifaceted and as you can see in some builds it's only like a tier two uh, even for the tall ones it's tier three like if you're 610 and above or i think it's 611 and above if you're 611 and above, Agent 3 is a tier 1, which is unbelievable because on that SK build, the 7 footer with 92 3 pointer, he gets Agent 3 in tier 1, blinders in tier 2. It's crazy, crazy, crazy. But anyway, again, Agent 3 helping you make fadeaway shots or spin shots, as you can see. But there's more to it. This badge even activates on regular step back or just move around shots. As long as you're not catching shooting, this badge activates on every single shot. Whether you're literally just sprinting around with your left stick and you stop and shoot, whether you're doing a hop back off that LeBron James size up escape, whether you're doing a fade, a spin shot, anything like that, it literally activates on every single shot, maybe minus the space creator ones where you're doing step backs. But like I said, I think this badge could use a nerf, maybe not in its power so much. I do still think fading could, could get a little bit of a nerf, so to say, because really let's be honest fadeaway shots really should not be the same efficiency as a standstill shot or a catch and shoot shot that's pretty crazy talk i know me myself i don't fade a whole lot but 
I've seen it firsthand from my guards or seen it firsthand from the opponents. Fades are plenty easy to make, especially paired with that Trey Young like dribble pull up with small guards, or you even have KD, normal one, all types of stuff like that. All these animations are plenty good enough to still fade at a super high rate. And honestly, some people really just do it regardless of whether they're open or not. Like they'll literally just fade even if they're open. But again, that's not even my main concern when it comes to this badge. I just think this badge should only be for fading and spin shots. I don't think this should be lighting up at all when it comes to quick stops or just doing the hop back jumpers and stuff like that. Let's be realistic. It's pretty crazy that that's a thing because currently agent three is like S plus tier right now because there's no reason not to have it on a build unless you're literally just a corner spot up. That's the only reason. And again, I don't think so much power should be put into one badge. It'd be really cool if they just kind of split these two things up a little bit. Because currently, Agent 3 is like three different badges from 2K22 all combined. And to do that in such a badge tiering way, where you have to spend badge points on this, like imagine if this were split up into three different badges and they're all tier 1s of tier 2s. You'd have to run at least 12 points to have it on Hall of Fame. But instead, for Agent 3 on Hall of Fame in this build, you'd have to have only like six. Or again, in, in tier 3, you'd have to have only eight. So... I think if they were to split something up like this, I don't know if they can do that though, it's a little bit too late, but long story short, what I want to come back to in a realistic sense of nerfing this badge is maybe just not make it so utilizable when it comes to just step back three pointers or the hop back three pointers as I mean to say with like the LeBron James size up escape or just literally running around with your left stick and, and quick stopping. It's pretty crazy that that activates this. Alright, so next up on the list at number two, we have Glove. Let's be realistic about this. I don't think they need to nerf this all the way into the ground. They don't need to make it unusable by any means. I think if they simply just took the power of it and dropped it by one tier each, it'd probably be good. As in, if Hall of Fame only has the power of gold, I think that'd be good. If gold only has the power of silver, I think that'd be good. If silver only has the power of bronze, I think that'd be good. And me speaking from a biased perspective, my main build has silver glove and 90 steel. And Really, that's where the cutoff is. Silver is where you actually start to see some improvement. Personally though, I don't think that's really balanced. I think to have gold or Hall of Fame should be the only way that you really utilize this badge. And even at Hall of Fame, the power of it needs to be nerfed down a little bit. Now, on that same note, I obviously have said this many different times in my videos. I understand that if you're clicking on this video, you don't always see that because you're maybe new to the channel, but I have been absolutely being trying to be a spokesperson for if glove does get nerfed, they need to up clamps and buff clamps. So those two things going hand in hand, I think it makes for really good gameplay. I think it would allow people to play legitimate defense and actually stand in front of your offensive matchup because I couldn't tell you how many times I've got a force pickup this year, probably like two. And for that matter, not very many stonewall cutoff animations either. I just think clamps is bad and it's probably in pair with clamp breaker too. So like I said, if we do two things that are mentioned in this video where if you, if you nerf glove and you nerf clamp breaker, then I think you should buff clamps as well. I think that's a perfect trio right there of some really good gameplay. You don't have to nerf them all the way into the ground though. I know a lot of people are like, oh, my build's gonna get patched if you do that. Stop advocating for this. Bro, listen, it's literally me just asking for one level of the badge being nerfed down for you to have the power of gold if you have Hall of Fame. It's literally as simple as that. And you're probably like, oh, well, why do I even have Hall of Fame? Well, the people below you get nerfed as well. So it's not even, you know, you got to put things in perspective with this stuff is all I'm asking. So just understand that the badge is way too overpowered. And really, yes, I understand guards should stay away from you or they should dribble smarter when they're near you. But come on, let's be real. Like <laughs> this just needs a little bit of a nerf. And if you could play some more real defense, I don't see that as a downside at all. I think this is a win-win for a lot of things. You'll still steal the ball from very bad ball handlers or people that are dribbling super reckless in front of you still. And with that in mind, you'll probably get more bumps, more body up animations that lead to more bump steals because you stop ball handlers from moving entirely and can cut them off, play real defense even more. So if all those things pair together where you do nerf glove and then you do buff clamps, maybe clamp breaker doesn't even need to be touched then if you do buff clamps, but who knows, maybe it could still even use a little bit of a nerf too. But anyway, that is number two on my list, being glove. Number one, some people are probably very curious because you're like, how could there be anything more broken than glove? Well, let's talk about it. So this badge being bailout, I've used it myself. I've used it with my teammates. I have seen opponents spam this like crazy too. The amount of literally the title of the badge, the amount of bailout passes that people have done where they take horrible shots, horrible layups and just fly out of it and put it on the money to their teammate is unbelievable. I think this badge, even at silver, even at bronze, and then especially at gold, and I haven't really seen it at Hall of Fame, to be fair, nobody really runs 94 patch accuracy, but at gold, 
and then silver bronze. This is an unbelievably overpowered badge. It makes no sense to be this good, and it's such a bad badge to be good. And again, I use it, yeah, I use it on gold on my slasher build, and I'll still use the badge pretty often too. Why? Because it's in the game. But it really shouldn't be in the game at such a high efficiency level, if we're being real. It really, really does need to get toned quite a bit. Once again, I think if you just nerf down the power of the badge, I don't know though, because even honestly, like I said, bronze is still super OD. So I don't know. They really just need to tone down this badge's power just in general. I mean, as you can see, also helps for passing out of double teams too. That's not really such a focal point, but obviously the main concern that we have is for out of jump shots, layups. As you can see, yields fewer errant passes than normal, where <laughs> once again, you get super accurate passes when doing it out of that as well. And to be fair, I have no problem with a passing badge being great. It's just that this one's extremely brain dead. I really wish there was just maybe things like Needle Threader that were more relevant, or for instance, like I, I like the fact that Dimer is actually pretty good in this year's game, at least in my opinion. I've been running it a lot and it's really cheap. They keep it in tier one for nearly every build that's like point guard or forward oriented. I like the fact that Floor General is pretty cheap as well, at least if you're not, like I said, super tall, super big. but. Again, I just think things like Bailout could definitely use a bit of a nerf and just to not be so deviously good. But anyway, that is the video. I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, for to drop a like, sub, if you're new, turn on the notice. All the good stuff, like always, tries to get one to 2,000 likes. And if you made it to the end of the video, put patch in the comments to show your support you made all the way through or put nerf in the comments. Either way, appreciate you guys watching. As always, leave your feedback on this too. Try to do it in a respectful way because I promise you if you're hating and stuff like that, I'm not reading it or I'm not replying or I'm just going to hide you from the YouTube channel. <laughs> one of the two so again feel free to leave your feedback just be a nice person is all you know what i'm saying so real quick just to recap before we end the video because it's gonna be very easy for me to just read off to you guys off this note list that i had honorable mentions of the nerfs that could happen were slithery fearless finisher and acrobat all the kind of brain dead finishing badges that could just use a little bit of a rework i really do think interior defense is in a pretty good spot though for being honest but some of the especially acrobat <laughs> some of the brain dead slashing things in this game could use a little bit of a rework anyway into the actual list, it was Limitless Takeoff number five, Clamp Breaker number four, Agent three number three, Glove number two, and Bailout number one. So again, feel free to leave your feedback. Let me know what you guys think of the list. Let me know if you think there's any badges I missed out here. And feel free to watch the other video talking about the badges that need to be buffed in 2K23, or the ones that need a boost, so to say. But anyway, that's off video. Hope you all enjoyed. And on that, take it easy, man. Peace.